So, your first step if you want to make a flying creature is to get some paper and a pencil and you'll probably need a rubber. I know I'll definitely need a rubber. First thing you want to do is outline your animal. Now, you can take time over this. I've, I haven't showed you my first sketch of this. This is my second or third of my horse. Or my Pegasus. And the thing you have to remember with any sort of puppet is breaking it down into body parts. So we have our body. And our tail. And our legs, which would be a separate part. And it's galloping. I'm not fantastic at animal anatomy, but I haven't practiced that much recently and it's been a while since I've made a horse of any kind, flying or otherwise. Look at reference images, which I'm not doing right now. And you can even trace something you like as long as it's in the profile from the side. So that's our rough horse. Once you've got drawing, the easiest way to do this, if you haven't got any tracing paper, as a little trick, you're going to need to have two copies of your drawing, or at least a second copy of the horse's body. Just the body, because we're going to cut out all the pieces separately. So there's a little trick to do this. If you can't quite see through the paper, there's a little trick I can show you. Find a window. And all I want to trace is the second part of the body. So a copy of the body. And I can see just about, see that. And the other thing I like to mark is just where the legs are and the head. And we're just going to put the tail. No, we don't need the tail on the. Okay. So now I've got my second copy. We've got our copy of the body. The next thing we're going to do is cut it out. tail. Now you see I've left a little bit of the tail on there which will all be explained later. Now one of the things you can do, so with your second body, because you've got two that you've drawn, one will look a bit different from this, you cut out a middle section and it has to fit between the legs like that. You see the legs can still go in there with the middle bit of the body. And this is going to be the bit that supports your stick on your finished one. It'll be hidden in here, inside the body. But we're missing some wings, so I'm just going to lay a piece of paper over the top and just imagine what how big the wings might be. So remember, you can use use a reference for doing this. Uh, my uncle always taught me there was a little trick to drawing wings because if you look at how a wing is structured it's kind of divided into two sections and it helps you draw the feathers but maybe I should do a separate video on that so that's kind of how I tend to sketch out a wing and then I go into a bit more detail and I've cut out one here. I'm going to put all of our parts aside 
And next you need some cardboard. And I figure there's probably a lot of that around at the moment since we're all indoors. I've cut every single part out with scissors just to prove you can do it without a knife. You don't need any fancy tools, just a pair of kitchen scissors, but of course ask the chef first. Don't go using your, your mum's hairdressing scissors without asking. Whatever you have, make sure if it belongs to someone else you've asked them. So now we're going to draw them all out. So we need two wings and I'm going to flip it over just so they're on they're both matching when you see them because on the opposite side there's going to be a little bit of mess but I like to if I'm making two two parts I like to flip it just to make sure if there's any difference in the way I'm cutting something it matches so we've got two wings we actually need two parts of this because we're going to sandwich the head and the tail and the holder for your stick in the middle. So we've got two bodies and two wings. Next we need the centerpiece of the body. Now I'm going to put that, I'm going to put that the other way when you look at cardboard you see it's got this edge and this edge if you're laminating something together which is gluing two pieces of something together it's stronger if you go in one direction and then the other direction so we've got one body bit now we need to do head Uh, leg. So we're going to need two of each of these. So I'm going to do one this way around and one the other way around. And now we just need two back legs and this is it. And that's all of the parts that we need to cut out. Time to cut. Now we've got all our pieces. First we've got to take the body piece. That's our middle pit of the body. And this is the top bit. The tail will get sandwiched in there. The head will get sandwiched in here. And then we will then glue the legs onto the outside on either side. Our first step is to get our stick. Any old garden stick. You might even be able to find something outside. You could use a kebab stick. But these are bits of bamboo that I had. So you might want some help doing this. Uh, you'll need some sort of pliers or something with a cutter like this and I'm going to cut it up here so I'll take that and I'm just going to draw around it and I want it to go quite high up in there and Next we want to glue this down with a bit of PVA. This is just normal PVA glue like you have at school. But PVA is pretty good for this sort of thing. I'm just going to glue that on there. We're going to glue the tail in while we're at it.
and you can if you have them you could use a split pin for putting the head on um, these are a little bit short but they still work on this so we'll, we'll put the head on with a split pin which means you'll be able to move the horse's head to whatever position you like so we want to put a little bit of glue in there And that sandwich is nice in there. And then what I like to do is first I'm going to put a little bit of PVA around here because PVA bonds paper really, really nicely. Um, but hot glue is just a little bit stronger when it comes to something like this. So I'm going to put a little bit either side of the wood. And then where is my piece? There it is. I'm going to stick that in the top. I'm going to hold it together with some clips and then now we're all glued. I'm going to put the horse's head in. Now the easiest way to do this is this is called a awl or a bradle. I'm not quite sure what the difference is but Anyway, they're quite spiky and sharp. You might want to, you could use the end of a, the pointy end of a kebab stick. The point is to watch your fingers and put that in there. And that goes all the way through. So now I can put my split pin in. Which is just long enough for me to do it. And then we can pose our horse's head. So now it's time to add legs. And a bit of PVA, press it down nicely. And if you want to go all the way, you can also use split pins on the legs. But I'm using what I have to hand, and I found one split pin. And then we flip it over, and we add our other legs. And then do another one here. So that's a horse, but we want to turn it into a Pegasus. We've got our wings. And we have to put a fold in them so that they can flap. And you want to make sure the fold's in the same place on both wings. You could use a ruler, but I'm just doing this by eye. So they're both about the same as each other. And then we attach them to the body. And we're going to need a bit of glue again. And then we'll need um, some clips as well. Put one on one side. And just so that when it bends, it's just along the body line. Yeah. So we flip her over. Oops. She's got to hold that on there and then I'll clip it in place. So I'm going to put a bit of glue in for the other wing. And then I'm going to clip them in place while the glue binds. Move the head out of the way. And there we go. We need to make the handle so we can make this up a long bit of cardboard and we'll just make sure that it's going in this direction so it folds in this direction fold it all up And what we'll want to do is, I probably made the handle for this one a little bit long. We're going to want to roll that around there, leaving enough room for it to slide freely up and down. Because we want our Pegasus to be able to fly. So I'm just going to cut that to about there.
And then I've run out of clips. Got a big one. I'll just hold that closed for a minute. Uh, while all of those things are drying, we are going to need some wire. Now, if you don't have any wire around, I'm sure you probably have one of these lying around somewhere. So, it takes a bit of strength to do this. But we want to straighten this out. And then you've got a nice long straight bit of wire for your wings. I'm going to cut a piece off the end. So, I've got a nice long bit, bit of wire. Hopefully by now our wings have dried. Right, so now we have our pegasus. But we need to make the wings flap. We're going to get our wire. We want to raise the wing up from the table just enough. So that's going to be our high position so that when you move the handle lower the wing will flap into the low position. That's about how long I want my wire to be. So I need to cut two pieces like this. So those are our two pieces. And now we need some gaffer tape. In England we call it gaffer tape, in America I think they call it duct tape and I'm not sure what they call it everywhere else in the world. It's very strong tape. If you don't have any of this, you can totally get away with using sellotape. Sellotape was my best friend for many, many years before duct tape came along. So, you cut little strips like this and then you want to attach it to the top and then just fold the wings over like that. So you end up with something like that. And then I'm going to fold it back and raise that wing into the position I want it to be in. Just about there. And stick it down nice. So that's what you've got there. And then you want to do the same thing again but on the top of the wire. So I take another strip and I put it on in roughly the same place but on the opposite side and make it sure it's nice and flat. And there you've got a nice flexible joint that should be quite strong. So then you do the same thing on the handle. And you've got to make sure it's in the right position. So I'm going to cut two pieces. Two pieces. Do the same thing again. And do it on the bottom first. And fold it back on itself. And that's the position I want the wing to be in when it's at its highest. Yep. Now I'll do the same thing on the top. And then for this you have to raise the raise that down a bit. Very hard to do behind the camera. And then fold these round. So you're you're creating the same sort of joint at the bottom as you are on the top. And now, as you can see, we've got a wing that moves. I'm going to reinforce this with a bit more tape here. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And make sure that's at the same level on this side. Sure that's roughly the same as well. well. That's not the same at all. I 
that's better. Okay, so we now, we have a flying horse. <laughs> So, the next thing you can do is take your horse and give it a coat of paint. <laughs> you don't have to make a Pegasus like we have here. You can make any animal you want. <laughs> 